Uh, good morning everybody, um, or whatever time of day it happens to be for you. It's morning for me. Um, I said that I would just quickly finish off the lesson. Um, we've been doing a double lesson about Yalta, Potsdam and the London Conference, and the part we didn't quite get onto was the bit about the London Conference at the end. Uh, so um, it'll just be a very quick video. It won't take a second, if, if more than two or three minutes to do this, I don't think. I just need to whiz through um, to where we got to. So if you just be be patient and bear with me. Okay, so um, it just obviously just, just gives you a quick flavour of um, how much we've uh, managed to cover so, um, in this lesson. We've covered a lot of content. Um, it's worthwhile having a quick sort of like, just to get your mind back into, into the sense of where we've got to, have a quick look at the in a nutshell. So we started off about the Cold War being an ideological conflict and the fact that uh, with the division of Germany, it kind of captured... Um, the essence of the Cold War and so the Cold War started with Germany's division and it ended with Germany's reunification so they're intrinsically linked the Cold War and Germany um, we then moved into Yalta um, and broadly speaking um, there was agreement there was no sort of real sense with the Allies uh, although they were ideologically divided, there was no real sense that there was going to become a Cold War. They were unified by um, the, their, um, obviously, common enemies against Nazi Germany. But there were little glimmers of future problems. And then, of course, at Yalta, um, the mistrust began to appear. And the, 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 those ideological differences that came to the fore, um, and in particular... Um, disagreement about reparations remember the whole thrust of it was that the british and the americans um with time were happy wanted really to give germany back to the german people um introduced starting at the local level degrees of self-rule um and by 1947 um Effectively, that had crept up the, our sort of pyramid and um, the, the Americans and the British had introduced the old federal states. They were still, they, they hadn't gone, gone as far as to introduce a sort of a central government and of course Potsdam um, forbade that from actually happening. Um, but Stalin was very angry because he saw everything there as a breach of at Potsdam. Remember the, the basis, of Pot, uh, the key thing at Potsdam was um, the four military chiefs at the Allied, in the Allied Control Council had agreed that they m must treat Germany as a unified whole, everything they do, even though administratively the four allies were administering the separate zones and sectors, they must treat Germany as a unified whole. But clearly by 1947, um, that agreement was starting to break down and the Americans and the British in particular were unilaterally starting to make their own decisions and primarily because they didn't really want to hang around in Germany um, they uh, believed it was important um, ultimately that the Germans take responsibility for running their own affairs again and um, so that Germany could revive its wealth become a, a trading country and that, that in the end would benefit um, the whole world um, in particular because of Germany's wealth in the rule. Okay, so we, we looked at those areas. And then we finished off last lesson um, with this um, point about, um, again, we, linking to what I've just said, the Americans and the British, therefore, started to give political freedoms to the Germans in, the West, in, in their own zones, okay? 
Um, and as a result, um, if you were a German living in the Western zones, the British, the French, and the, the, the British, the Americans, and the French followed suit, um, they were allowed to form their own political parties. Now, Stalin also followed suit um, in, the, in the East, okay? But, um, of course, with these differences, what started to now happen is there was manipulation, particularly by Stalin in the East. So in the West, um, it was um, the Germans formed their own political parties. There was a, a manipulation to an extent. The Nazi party was not allowed to reform, so the, the Americans and the British... Um, uh, it's part of what we call the denazification of Germany. Um, but um, the SPD um, f formed and uh, reformed. Remember, Hitler had crushed them in 1933. Um, and the old Catholic Centre Party kind of reformed in a new guise. It was um, much more appealing to Protestants as well. And we'll do more about that. Um, and the key, those are the, the sort of key um, individuals that you need to be aware of. Um, and we'll do whole lessons on them. Schumacher and, of course, Adenauer. OK. Um, but in the East, remember, um, Stalin forcibly... U, uh, united the old SPD and the old Communist Party. Those are the parties that had been crushed by Hitler in 1933 uh, into a socialist unity party. And Stalin's um, argument, um, possibly for good reason, is that um, if those two parties had been united in, into one polit one large polit left wing party in 1932-33, um, then it would have been much more difficult for the far right to take power. In other words, Hitler in 1933, um, and so Stalin was very much sort of like taking a practical measure in his zone to ensure that the roots of Nazism couldn't grow again, the seeds of Nazism couldn't grow, and that was the sort of concern. That Stalin had, and again, possibly justifiably, because remember the the millions of German people that are now under the supervision of the Russians, the Americans, the British, and the French, have gone through twelve years of Nazification, uh, indoctrination in Nazi values, um, and if if uh, in Stalin's view, if they're given too much leeway to take part in politics too quickly. It could lead to a revival of um, Nazism, so um, you got a different a different approach towards how to resolve this particular issue. Okay, so that's that's obviously a key area that we finished off with. Um, so we just need now to um, do the last strand, the London Conference. So there we have again the usual routine uh, in a nutshell. So the foreign ministers of America, Britain, France, and others, okay, um, the Benelux, Benelux countries, Belgium, Netherlands, etc., um, uh, that have been victimised by the Nazis during World War One, so World War Two, met in London in 1948. Okay, now of course it had been recognised when the war ended in 1945 that to end the war there needed to be a peace treaty. OK, That's in the same way as the Treaty of Versailles had ended World War One, So a peace treaty that would decide on the terms that would be imposed on Germany as the defeated country. Um, and the peace treaty is, of course, um, drawn up by the governments of the, the, the winning side, the so-called the so allies. Um, and the key ministers in the governments who would take a lead in the drawing of a peace treaty would be the foreign ministers, OK? So that was the purpose of the London Conference, to get together to effectively formally end the war and draw up a peace treaty uh, with, with Germany. But, of course, because of the breakdown of the relations, Stalin was not present, OK? So, in a sense, they... The, the foreign ministers, in a sense, unilaterally proceeded um, and with what with their with their business, and they said, well, if Stalin's not going to turn up because obviously the relations had soured, um, we're going to basically proceed with doing what we want to do with the zones we control, and so 
a decision was made to create a separate West German state out of the three Western zones. Okay. Um, and what that basically meant is, it, and it had already started to happen, remember, that they had um, gradually, bit by bit, given the people, the Germans living in the Western zones, a degree of political power, initially with local elections, sort of like uh, town elections, council elections, then regional elections, then, of course, the um, land tag elections, that, in other words, the federal states. Okay, so... Um, there, there, there were already um, uh, federal governments for the different German states, but now they've made the decision, we'll bring that right up to the top and we will allow all the Germans living in the Western zones to elect and choose their own central government. But this, of course, this central government, because Stalin has opted out of attending the conference, the, the central government would only apply to the western zones of Germany. Okay, so Stalin, so effectively the, the, the London conference resulted in the creation of a West German state um, that would be, that was a, and we'll, we'll do a future lesson, we'll look at how, what form that took. Um, and one of the first decisions is what do we call it? And they decided to call it the Federal Republic of Germany, okay, the, the FRG. Uh, now, Stalin viewed that decision as a blatant breach of the Potsdam Agreement, um, because, of course, the Potsdam Agreement was that any decision about Germany had to be a unanimous decision agreed by all four, and this was not. It was a unilateral decision made by three of them. Uh, so the London Conference is now seen to be a major step towards the Cold War, uh, which began a year later um, in 1949. So that's the important word. So uh, there, here's the detail, um, February to June 1948, um, there's a photograph there, relations between the Soviet Union and the Western Allies worsened significantly. Uh, at the London Conference from February to June, the USA and five countries uh, in democratic Western Europe, so Britain and France, part of the Allies, but also Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg, what we call the Benelux countries, uh, BE for Belgium, NA, NE for Netherlands and Lux for Luxembourg, um, reached the conclusion that Germany was going to have to be divided into two countries. Okay, um, and that, that that conclusion was reached without Stalin's um, agreement. Stalin did not want to divide the Germany. Okay, Stalin wanted a united Germany in the middle of Europe. So they concluded that this would have to mean the creation of permanent democratic institutions in the western half of Germany. In other words, um, there would have to be uh, the, 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 the federal states that have formed by 1947 will stay, but now there needs to be a higher level of government at the top level, um, a central government for the western German states, elected and chosen by the uh, Germans living in the western zones. So as a result, in July 1948, the Lender ministers, and remember when we talk about Lender, um, goes back to year 12, very important. A land, the, a land is the, German, is the German word for a federal state. Yeah, sort of Baden or Bavaria or Württemberg, um, those sort of like significant political entities um, that had always made up Germany um, and had their own elected parliaments and their own government for local matters. Okay, and they had gradually come into existence, the British and the Americans and the French had allowed the Germans living in the Western zones to elect their own um, um, federal state governments. And the word lender is plural for land. OK, um, and so within each of these different lands, lender, um, say, for example, Bavaria, um, the Bavarian people had elected a parliament and the parliament had appointed a Bavarian state government. Um, and the state government consists of ministers. So there would be Bavarian ministers in charge of the Bavarian state government. There would be um, Württemberg ministers in charge of the Württemberg state government, etc. OK, the different lender. Um, and so the foreign, the foreign ministers of the British, France and America met. Um, and uh, with the Benelux foreign ministers, and they decided, right, we're going to basically 
give a message to the German ministers of the different lender, and so in other words, the government leaders of the separate lender, and said, over to you guys, you can now form a new, your, your own country, and you've got to decide what form will it take, and um, how a central government for the Western zones will be chosen. Okay, so the lender ministers who were Germans um, were basically told, go ahead and st begin discussions uh, for um, a new a new constitution, um, which is the final point there. Okay, so there we go. Um, there's the page page references uh, for this particular section about the Londoners, and again, I think Turner is. Williamson is excellent. Um, Turner is the most readable, and I remember I've created my own notes from Turner. So go to the Turner notes I gave you, and in the section from Turner, pages 22 to 32, um, which is called Germany is the Focus of the Cold War, um, then have a look at that particular section. Okay, The turning point of February 1948, the London Conference, and calls for a separate West Germany. But as I say, make sure you go to, you read Turner as well, okay? Um, I'll, I'll give full access to um, to that. I'll put them in the files in Teams. So go to the go to the folders in Teams and, and make sure you read Turner as well. Um, so that's it. Um, I'll get this YouTube video to you. Um, at some point in the next, um, hopefully today I'll, get all the materials into teams for you and uh, um, but i'll get this video out to you straight away thanks very much as i finished my map not um, and um oh yes yeah, so flip learning for next two lessons <clears throat> um there we go pages 134 to 7 of the textbook the decision to create west germany and we'll look at the west german constitution uh, so um, there we go. That's it, the end of the lesson. <laughs>